for the 1970s, American economists ended upon a macroeconomic model that was similar to the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model you've been taught. Aggregate expenditures, or AE model that they were using, showed a relationship between the planned levels of consumption, private investment, government purchases, and net exports to the level of real GDP. This older model had a major flaw that we'll get more into details of later, but was corrected by the ASAD model. The aggregate expenditure model considered the price level as an exogenous constant. That flaw proved fatal when we tried to explain the painful stagflation of the 1970s. But today, the AE model offers some useful insight into understanding how households' consumption decisions interact with the rest of the macro economy. Like the ASAD model, we should think about the AE model as a forward-looking one, used to model possible levels of output for an economy in the future on possible levels of expenditures. You see the big difference between the AE model and the ASAD model, aside from how inflation is handled, that the AE model considers planned private investment, which is different from the actual level of investment that ends up happening in the economy. The difference is called unplanned investment, which could be positive, indicating more investment was planned, was done than planned, or negative, indicating less investment was done than planned. Now, in most macroeconomic models, we assume that investment equals savings, so that we plan investment number that is the same as the disposable income households forego spending on consumption. But it's possible that the savings provided by households wouldn't be enough to finance the level of investment required to meet the level of consumption in the economy. The U.S. is in a position similar to that, with the unplanned investment in this case being positive. Firms needed to produce more than was predicted or planned. To get to any of that, though, we need to understand the consumption function. Remember that the constant I discussed in the last video? It's back, but now we'll call it autonomous expenditures. It tells us where the AE curve's intercept lies on the y-axis. It's autonomous because the constant in the consumption function represents the base level of consumption households have to do at least to survive, regardless of their income. Here's another way to think about it. You and the homeless both need clothing, food, and shelter. The homeless may just have to find illicit ways to make those same ends meet. They're still consuming, even with little to no income. Criminal justice majors pay attention. The implication here is that there's some level of crime that we can't be rid of by just employing more cops or legislating more stringent laws. Some crime, it's purely economic, and it can only be sustainably prevented by making sure everyone can at least afford their autonomous consumption needs. The second part of the consumption function, after the constant, represents what we call induced consumption. This is the expected increase in consumption from households as the economy grows and theoretically households make more money. As we learned earlier, this is part of why economic growth can be so problematic. We consume more and not always of the best things. The induced consumption part of the consumption function is why the AE curve is upward sloping. There's a positive relationship between expenditures and the size of the economy. And just like the ASAD model, there is an equilibrium point in the AE model. We draw a 45 degree line through the middle of the graph, which shows all the points on the graph where the aggregate expenditures and real GDP are the same. Wherever this 45 degree line intersects with the AE curve is where the model is at equilibrium. That's where aggregate expenditures are the same as real GDP. Therefore, by implication, where planned investments equal actual investments, meaning unplanned investments are zero. All points of equilibrium are unsustainable in this model. If real GDP is higher than aggregate expenditures, then firms invested in building too much inventory and we'd expect real GDP to fall. The opposite is true if real GDP is lower than aggregate expenditures. Then firms didn't invest in building enough inventory, and we'd expect real GDP to rise. All the changes in the AE model, though, flow through the multiplier, which in this case is related to the marginal propensity to consume, or MPC. The smaller the MPC, the larger the multiplier in the AE model. Expanding the AE model to include more than households and firms is pretty simple, too. We assume that government purchases are equivalent to taxes households pay on their personal income, aka the income before taxes. And in more advanced macroeconomic models, 
the assumption is that net exports is equivalent to the opposite sign of the unplanned investments number. So in the U.S.'s case, if unplanned investments are positive, indicating that our savings weren't enough to finance an investment necessary to meet our domestic level of consumption, then the net exports value is negative. Negative net exports number demonstrates that households probably consumed more from overseas and the cash that was sent overseas probably came back home in the form of capital investment that allowed us to get closer to meeting our domestic consumption levels.